So I played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in 2022, and it reminded me why I ranked this game as my number one Assassin's Creed game of all time. Now, I made that ranking video late last year, and honestly, guys, it just depends on the day. I have to say, Assassin's Creed 2 definitely didn't deserve to be sixth on that list. It's definitely much higher than that. But I look at Assassin's Creed 2 as the mini Keanu to the normal size Keanu that is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It's the game that took all of the foundations laid in Assassin's Creed 2, the origin story of Ezio, and then just like built it out and made him a complete badass killing machine. That is the fantasy that I connected most with as a kid, and you know what? It's still my favorite. I played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in 2022 to see if it still holds up as one of my favorite games of all time, and it absolutely does. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. My wife and I love to cook, but we hate going to the grocery store. It sucks. And that's why HelloFresh is so nice, because you get this full box, all of the instructions are there, and each one only takes like 30 minutes to make. Even my dogs approve. We went for the Mexican chicken and rice bowl because it looked really good, and we never really make Mexican food at home. Tex-Mex is everywhere in Texas, but we wanted to try making it ourselves. Luckily, my wife is really good with a knife, so I'd let her chop everything up, and these guys enjoyed the smells. One thing I actually worry about is wasting food and the effects on the environment, and the good thing is you can cut down on your food waste by at least 23% with HelloFresh, and the supply chain reduces greenhouse gas emissions compared to grocery shopping. So you can have fun cooking alone or having a date night feel good about what you're eating and how you got it. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code P-O-G-J-V-A-U-G-16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes plus three surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Sign up for HelloFresh today. But JV, how could this be the best Assassin's Creed? It came out 12 years ago. It looks like a pile of garbage compared to the new games. The combat was mindless. It was just counter kill. You just hold down RT and X. It's basically the same thing as Assassin's Creed 2, just more of the game. I hear you. I hear your complaints, but no. Here's five reasons I love Brotherhood right here, right now. Number one, it's a city game. Number two, mature Ezio. Number three, this combat is awesome. Number four, it's actually a sequel. And number five, it's a playground game. But back to number one, the city game. Why is the city game so important for Assassin's Creed? First and foremost, it affects the way you play on a moment to moment basis. And simply put, it's the buildings. The buildings are closer together. You're able to traverse this playground from point A to point B, feeling like an actual assassin. Now, Brotherhood does have the horse, which you can use anywhere. And I really do like that because Rome does have those big, large stretches. And sometimes it does take a while to get from point A to point B. But for the vast majority of this game, you're going to be using buildings, and that means you're going to be using parkour. So much of the assassin fantasy to me is how I move and how I make those little decisions to go from one place to another, climbing buildings, jumping off of buildings, using the environment around me as a tool. The gameplay loop of gaining notoriety, getting seen, and then maybe running away from guards and using line of sight in order to break that and hide and become anonymous again. You don't get these gameplay loops if you don't have have a compact city. That's why it's so important to me, and it really does affect the moment to moment in these games. And then the other element, which the newer games don't do as well, at least to me, because you're just not in cities that much, it's that these environments feel like they're full of people because they are. They're random people doing random stuff, and if you do something crazy, like kill a guard in front of them, they're gonna react to you. If you're involved in a chase, you know, you get to see this bright, bustling city go into a panic. It almost has this rockstar level of city interaction where you can do all kinds of stuff and you will see a direct result and sometimes things go off the rails and chaos is created and that is such a cool feeling in an open world video game. Now I'm not really here to dunk on the newer games but try and do the same sort of shenanigans in the newer games and you just won't get that feeling. The cities are not bustling, they're barely populated, they're super spread out. Quite simply you don't get the same gameplay loop in the newer games that you get in the older games and I think that's a large part due to the way these environments are laid out and the choice of setting. I mean, Rome 1500, it's really hard to beat. 
Let's move on to mature Ezio. I really like Ezio's manner and tone in this game. It really feels like he grew up from Assassin's Creed 2 because Assassin's Creed 2 took place over like 20 years. It's absolutely insane. So it's almost like they take that into account with how Ezio acts. And I think that's number one, realistic. But number two, it shows actual character development, which I guess feeds into my sequel point, which we'll get to later. Ezio has seen some Obviously, he watched his family die in the first game, so in this game, he's pissed. He chose to spare Rodrigo, which that does, you know, bear consequences later down the line, but now he's got Cesare to deal with. He's also at odds with Machiavelli and sort of building up the brotherhood within Rome. That's another challenge in and of itself. It requires a more level-headed, seasoned assassin, and that's how I see Ezio in this game. We're not just a kid learning the ropes. Like, we have been through it, and now it's it's time to be the ultimate badass Templar killing machine. Taking nothing away from Assassin's Creed 2 Ezio, I think that origin story is fantastic, and I love playing it every single time and seeing that journey. But something about seeing Ezio at his height, you know, like at his absolute best, I think that's why Brotherhood is more compelling to me. And also it makes a lot more sense for Ezio to be this person who completely turns around an entire city, recruits all of these people to join the Assassins. You need someone with experience. You need someone who believes. You need someone who's been through it. So I think I like this no-nonsense version of Ezio because it's convincing that he would be in this position, but also at the same time, that's just me. That's just a personal preference. I sort of like a more brooding, more serious protagonist. That's exactly what you get in Brotherhood. So that's why I love this version of Ezio. Okay, it's time to get to this combat. Now, I know, I know your brain is melting at the idea that Assassin's Creed Brotherhood's combat is awesome. Number one is what we just talked about. Ezio has decades of Templar killing experience. So to see him evolve into this guy that can literally just counter people and kill them immediately, it makes sense. But also look at this freaking animation. Look how smooth this is. Yes, there's some broken animation stuff in there, but being so surrounded by 10 Templars and then being able to systematically pick them off one by one is so satisfying. No, it's not hard to hold RT and X when you see the very obvious blinking, hey, I'm about to hit you, you know, HUD thing right there. But when you chain together 20 of Cesare's Borgia goons, it's so fun. It's so cool to pull off. And another thing, if you are standing around holding block and waiting for that and clicking X to counter, and then that's just how you're playing the entire game, is that on the game just because you can pull it off? Or is that on you for not experimenting? Well, it's probably on the game as well for not clearly explaining that RTX is not the only way to play the game, but still, you can do so much more. You can be dodging, you can be diving into Ezio's huge bag of tricks and tools in order to manipulate the enemy and get an edge. You could be calling in your brotherhood and not just using the arrow storm ability that kills everyone. Yes, there is one tried and true way to play this game, and that's counter killing everyone, but you don't need to take that. And if you're taking that route and then looking at the game, and saying, why are you so easy? Why are you so repetitive? It reminds me of that meme where you stick a bar through your own bicycle like wheel. Yeah, it's your own fault. You get out of this combat and gameplay what you put into it. And if you don't put in a lot, then you don't get a lot out of it. At the end of the day, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding about what can make combat satisfying in a video game. Combat in modern open world games, a lot of the times it's more about this cat and mouse gameplay where you're learning patterns and rhythms and once you've mastered that and you can do it consistently, then you can kill anything. But what I think going back to Brotherhood in 2022, games like this, it shows us that combat that flows is pretty to look at and feel satisfying. You don't really get that when the game is about learning attack patterns. And also if there's like one viable way to defeat an enemy by learning an attack pattern, you lose out on your agency to decide how you want to play the game. Brotherhood is, here's a bunch of really cool sh you can do to enemies, you decide how to do it. That's why I think it feels so good. It's awesome. And when you sort of figure that in your head and actually start experimenting, the Brotherhood combat is so awesome.
Next up, Brotherhood is a true sequel, like we used to get. Now, video games, especially open world video games, are getting longer and longer these days, so it kind of makes sense, right? If you have a 50, 60 hour video game, do you really need a sequel for that game with the same character? From 2009 to 2011, three years in a row, we got three games starring the same character, Ezio Auditore da Firenze. We're with this guy literally from birth, and we get to follow him through his epic adventure through Renaissance Italy and then into Constantinople. Now at the time, the big criticism was that these games were too similar. It was three games in three years. And yes, they are, if you like, you know, really step back and look at these games together, they are similar. But that's the same of the Uncharted series. Those games were very similar, albeit they were developed over more time, so they were able to improve more by each step. But there's actually a huge benefit in having three games come out in three years years about the same character. There is a real cohesion about this story. In Brotherhood, it's the second act in Ezio's journey. And like I've already mentioned about Ezio, it's when he's at its best, his peak. It's when he has to take down Cesare, which, you know, he's, he's kind of a cartoon villain. I, I'm definitely not blind enough to, you know, excuse Cesare. He's a little bit dorky, but at the same time, I thought that fit perfectly for Ezio. He was the perfect heel for Ezio to go in and absolutely destroy. The advantages of a sequel actually extend beyond the story. It's in the gameplay. You see an evolution of the stuff that was introduced in 2 go further to its natural conclusion. Ezio is a seasoned assassin by this point. It makes sense that he can chain kill enemies. It makes sense that he's so entrenched in the Brotherhood now that he can recruit more people into the Brotherhood and become this master assassin that can, you know, direct other assassins to attack with him. When you sort of pull the plug and go to a new protagonist in a new location, Location. Sure, there are advantages for that in every single game. You don't, you know, have to rely on your customers having played the first game in order to get all the context, yada, yada, yada. But I still think there's a true advantage to the classic sequel, how games used to be shorter in length, more things happen over the course of 15 to 20 hours rather than a 60 plus hour video game with one character where it feels like you're moving slower than molasses. Ezio's list of accolades across two Brotherhood and Revelations is so so long that it would just be boring for me to list all of it out right now. Brotherhood is a sequel sequel, man. It is just the next step in this line of games for this character. It's not something we see much anymore. It's a damn good one. I think that's why I love it so much. Number five, Brotherhood is a playground game. I like to think of it as an amusement park sort of situation where literally if you look at the map on Brotherhood, it is full of crazy activities. They are so much fun. There's even these challenge boards with the Thieves Guild, the mercenaries, and the courtesans. There's a bunch of side mission stuff, especially Da Vinci's side missions are so amazing. Historical landmarks are a big part of this series, but dude, the Colosseum, it's really hard to beat that. All of the aqueducts and rebuilding them to finally see what they look like, you know, connected all together. And the Romulus layers, dude. Those dungeons. Something about going into a dungeon for like 10-15 minutes at a time, you know, completing some kind of side objective for full sync. Whatever it is about that experience, I love it. The focus of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is purely on fun. You know, the story is there, it's important, but it's not Assassin's Creed 2, where a lot of it is devoted to the origin of Ezio. A lot of that, you know, narrative beginning of the game sort of limits what you can actually do in gameplay. Throw that out of the window with Brotherhood. Very quickly after the beginning, you're plopped into this open world where you know what? It is your oyster. The focus is on fun, and I know that sounds like a marketing tagline for video games, but it's, it's simply true with Brotherhood. There is no time wasted. You are thrust in the position to have fun, to explore, and to do what you want on your own terms. That is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And honestly, the condensed runtime, the condensed size of the world works to this game's advantage because in terms of pacing, it never feels like you're going at a lull. If you want to advance that story, it's so fast, so easy to use even fast travel if you want to, which by the way, the concept of fast travel in a game like Brotherhood with the map size compared to modern games is laughable because it takes no time to get from, you know, 
one place to another, especially with a horse. At all times, Brotherhood is in service of the player. Have fun, very little downtime between activities. What you're doing is actually interesting. The writing is good. I could go on. Simply put, Brotherhood is a very fun video game. It knows it, and as a result, it's really fun to play. And I should have thought about this point when I was listing off my numbers, but I don't care. Here's a bonus point. Modern day, baby, it actually matters. What you're doing in the Animus affects what's happening outside of the Animus with the Assassins. The whole point is to go into the Animus, do something that gives you information on something in modern day. So Desmond goes into the Animus for a very specific reason. He finds the pieces of Eden, he goes out of the Animus, and they find them. The Assassins go out in the world and find them. I'm done hoping for an era where Ubisoft bounces back in general, but also bounces back with Assassins. Creed and sort of rekindles this connection. Clearly, it's more about the history, what's happening in the Animus, and that's, you know what, I've made peace with that. It's fine. I don't care anymore. But you can't go back to these games and tell me that this didn't matter, because it absolutely did. In between the sequences where you're with Ezio in Rome, getting more information for the modern-day Assassins, you pop back out with Desmond and the crew. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood represents an essential step in the modern-day storyline through the Ezio-Desmond trilogy. And these truth puzzles were so good. They might even be better than the Assassin's Creed 2 truth puzzles. The point is, for those of us who in 2022 do want to go back and live through these nostalgic games and see how modern day was treated back then, this game is so good with that. It's such a treat. I could probably talk more, but I think I'd keep repeating myself. So I'm going to try and close this off by saying Brotherhood for me was that special game in time where I replayed it so much. I really felt immersed in this universe and this world. And I don't think that really happens with every single video game in a series. You know what I mean? All of us have that one game that really grips us. Maybe it's your first game that you played in the Assassin's Creed series. And that's always had like a very special near and dear place in your heart. Brotherhood, for reasons that I probably can't tell you just on a YouTube video because it's very particular and special to me, is that game for me, right? It is that game. It just is. And that's why it's still my favorite. But I've saved the best for last. No, it's not really the best, but oh my goodness. For those of us who played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood multiplayer, it was a special time in vi our video game lives. Like it just was. It was this weird, wacky version of multiplayer in a time when games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 1 were the most popular multiplayer games out there. And then you had stuff like Bioshock 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood trying to give us competitive multiplayer. It had this rank up system where over time, based on how you actually performed in the game, you would gain experience and unlock more characters and unlock more abilities. I was so obsessed with this hide and go seek multiplayer that I actually made YouTube guides on like which are the best skins based on how obvious they are to point out in a crowd, you know, because that actually matters in hide and go seek. I played this for so many hours with my friends and I had such a good time with it. And it really makes me miss the time where we had these quirky, smaller multiplayer games that were sort of offshoot spinoffs of our most popular popular games. I mean, we do get that nowadays, but it's like in the form of BRs or just other things that also have a lot of microtransactions that feel kind of slimy and predatory instead of just made for fun. Brotherhood's multiplayer was just flat out fun and it could be frustrating at times, but I know I spent so much time playing with my friends and we had an absolute blast with it. Now, I didn't actually continue to play a lot of multiplayer in Assassin's Creed games. I didn't play it in Revelations 3 or Black Flag, and I'm sure I'm not alone, so Maybe that's why they decided to scrap it. It was just underused, but dude, it was such a cool concept, so unique, and I'm definitely sad that it doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, I couldn't end this video without talking a little bit about multiplayer because it was so important to me with Brotherhood. Anyways, guys, that is it for my Brotherhood in 2022 review. And just thank you for being patient with these guys. I've definitely taken the channel in a different direction with content this year, doing more of those kind of live record Let's Plays. And honestly, I'm having a blast with that kind of content. So, you know, it's been a struggle to sort of rally myself to make this uh, video. But we only have one more mainline Assassin's Creed review left. That's Assassin's Creed Revelations. So expect that in the future. 
Not sure when, but once again, thank you so much for your patience and support in this series. And that is it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video and hit the bell so you get a notification next time I upload. Thank you guys once again, and I will talk to you next time.